morning. Thank you, please, please sit down. Thank you. Mr. Oh, sorry, Secretary Babe Sigson, Mr. Timothy Waldron, Mr. Fernando Sabaldeela, Mr. Manny Pangilinan, Delegates of Water Loss 2012 Conference, fellow workers in government, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you've been having a lot of fun since you've gotten here, but looking at your very serious faces, I wonder if our Secretary of Tourism has not been doing his job. <laughs> I'm sure water loss, water loss is a significant problem, and I guess that's where the seriousness comes from. The solutions and the ideas that you've already been sharing with us is very much appreciated. Perhaps, may, I'm, if I may start, I used to represent the district in um, the central portion of Luzon, um, which really typified the problems of um, water management in this country. Our river systems were bone dry during the dry months, and they were rampaging rivers during the wet months. In trying to address the problem, we were shunted from one office to the other, telling us that the problem is not theirs, it belongs to another agency. Needless to say, you have a very strong advocate in my person as to the need to manage our water resources. Water is a strategic resource, too much of it or too little of it. It affects the economy as well as the health and safety of our people. This was evident most recently in the wake of Typhoon Sendong, which ravaged some parts of our country. It destroyed homes, took countless lives, and threatened more of our countrymen, even after it had left the Philippines. Sendong had destroyed water systems in Cagandoro and Iligan, and left the survivors scrambling for potable water. Cagayanons who survived the flooding, apart from having to cope with the loss of their loved ones and their homes, had to deal with thirst, even as they rinsed the mud from their streets under the midday sun. If it wasn't for the kindness of various groups and individuals who made certain that our countrymen there had access to water through donations that were airlifted or shipped to Cagayan, and who gave a welcome boost to the 54 million peso fund that government immediately released to rehabilitate downed water systems, then the suffering of the Sendong survivors may have been compounded even more. This is why our water sector needs extra focus, and this explains the reforms we have been undertaking since the beginning of our administration. When I came into office, we found that there are at least 30 different government agencies undertaking activities related to water. It was like the proverbial story of the blind man trying to describe an elephant. The problems in the water sector were evident, but everyone was trying to describe the situation from the narrow perspective of their own small rooms in the bureaucracy. Just to give you an idea, there is one agency that manages the watershed areas. There is a regulatory agency for the national capital region, a different for the rural areas. Another agency that handles a disposal of water within our dam systems, and so on and so forth. This is why in October of 2011, after consultations with my cabinet, I signed an executive order creating an interagency committee on the water sector, headed by no less than the, the Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary, who, when I looked around for volunteers to manage this seemingly gorge and not, my eyes gazed upon him and through to form, he came up to bat and will deliver soon. The committee is tasked to design and recommend a master plan for our water sector, which I'm told they are finalizing right now. To Secretary and Water Sir Babe Singson and everyone else involved, I look forward to seeing your proposal on my desk, hopefully before the end of the Lenten season. <laughs> In the meantime, the DPWH has laid down some key principles that will guide water reform. We want to integrate our management of water resources from planning to developing and finally to implementing programs. We want a totally scientific process. We want accurate data and solid analysis because only through this can we make the right decisions. Another crucial principle is in play here today as we consult with stakeholders. We want to talk to people like you and we want to hear what civil society has to say so that we can craft policies that give birth to real life solutions rather than ones that merely look good on paper. The government alone cannot improve the water sector totally. We need engaged stakeholders who are ready and willing to make our water systems in this country more efficient. And this is what you are doing today. In 2006, the World Bank released a study stating that developing countries lose an estimated 
45 million cubic meters of water a day through leaks. The study also said that around 30 million cubic meters of delivered water is not paid for due to stealing, corruption, or poor metering. According to the World Bank, cutting these losses in half would mean providing water to an additional 90 million people, which is just about the total population of the entire Philippines. This waste is at the root of many of our problems. It leads to higher prices, which increase the financial burden on consumers, who really have no choice but to consume a basic necessity like water. If we can somehow do a better job of plugging the leaks, of rooting out the grafters, and of providing safeguards against stealing, more of our citizens will have access to water, and the financial burden on our people will be minimized. This was also a concern of world leaders when they attended the Millennium Summit 12 years ago and crafted the Millennium Development Goals. And this is why one of the goals under ensuring environmental sustainability is to give more people access to safe drinking water. In the same way that leaders from all around the world gathered in the Millennium Summit and pledged to pursue our Millennium Development Goals, so too are people from your sector gathering to pull your knowledge and strategies to improve all our water loss management systems. This is, about, excuse me, this is not about patting each other's backs and resting easy with what we have achieved so far. It is about recognizing that more needs to be done and pulling together to attain higher goals. For our part, we want 86% of our people to have access to potable water systems by 2016. I am certain our government shares this goal with all of you. As long as we keep this common ground in mind and remain on a collaborative track, we can and will ultimately achieve this. At the bottom line is our principle of inclusive growth. This means bridging gaps, the gap between the boy who keeps the faucet running while brushing his teeth and the boy who has to walk miles to the nearest deep well just to get a glass of water. The gap between the man sitting in his bathtub and the mother who has to make do with one pail full of water for an entire day. Our shared goals will not be achieved by a few signatures and men in suits shaking hands. They will be achieved by the efforts of people in the front lines, people who work with the changing world, who pool their ideas and strengths to surpass the challenges we face. And the first important steps take place in conferences like this, with people who have dedicated their lives to excellence in their fields and who keep striving for even more excellence, even more efficiency. These are the same people who recognize that the foundations of consensus are built not merely on the ideas that we voice, but in listening to each other and keeping open minds. This holds true not only in your sector, but also in every effort to move humanity forward. May this conference lead to fruitful discourse, new strategies, and tangible realities. And before I end, you know, I grew up in a generation that had all of those apocalyptic films. Perhaps the first one was Soylent Green, and I don't know how many of you managed to see this film, Soylent Green, starring Charlton Heston and Edward G. Robinson. The point being, the world had run out of food, and the solutions that they afforded to, carry, to solve that particular problem. There have been a lot of wars fought over fossil fuels, among other things. Think about the situation where we do not really manage our water resource and we have to fight for this basic necessity. Hopefully, with the efforts you are exerting today, that will never come to pass. Thank you. Good day.